to Mr. Ian Moyes, uh, a an expert in, in cloud computing and influencer in the space, uh, ranked number one uh, by uh, certain publications, probably the best publications if he's they're ranking him number one for uh, social influencing on cloud. Also, a, a you know speaker on on social branding, selling uh, in general, and uh, and personal branding. Uh, so we can hop into that. Uh, first, I kind of just wanted like, can you define cloud computing in general? Yeah, that's a good one, right? The the, the simplest definition is it's um, stuff that runs on other people's computers that you access on your devices. That, that's that's probably the simplest non-technical one, right? So so if you're on your smartphone. You know, and people often, you're using cloud computing and you often don't know it. That's the beauty of it, right? You, you'll be using an application on your smartphone like Shazam or something. And the real power that drives what you get from that application, you know, Google, Google Earth and this sort of thing, looks like it's running locally. But the real heavy lifting and all the data and the clever stuff is being done on someone else's computer somewhere out there on the Internet. But who cares? Because it's working for you, right? You've got, you know, Waze as a nav system. Think about that. Waze as a nav, sy nav system wouldn't work without cloud computing. And, and what we just lived through with COVID, I think everyone listening to this in some way would have benefited from the beauty that cloud computing brings. We, 15 years ago, we wouldn't have been able to deal with COVID as we just have. We wouldn't have all hopped on video conferencing platforms um, at low or free cost and being able to switch them on overnight by, for millions of people and just get on with it because we it just wouldn't have worked. So uh, yeah, so we should all be thankful for cloud computing and, and what it lets us do in an affordable fashion right now. What was it like? Um, like how expensive was it to create an online service before cloud computing? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It also ages me a bit, right, with the way you asked the question of me. Um, <laughs> But the, the problem would have been if this had been pre-cloud, right, like what would have happened would have been you'd say, want to get some of this video stuff. Well, we'll, we'll try and sign up for some product. And you'd have pretty pretty much been queuing up with people, with, with vendors telling you, yeah, 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 you're, you're going to have to wait six months while we buy some more hardware and configure it and do this and et cetera. Um, unfortunately, it's just the way it was. Things took longer. The, what cloud computing does is gives you virtually infinite compute power. Well, it's called elastic computing. What it means is it can burst to the requirement um, as you need it. And that's what we saw, right? We were in millions, in millions overnight, we went to Zoom, Google, Google Hangouts, Microsoft Teams, and they just worked. You just kept signing up and they, they were just ready for it. Um, so what, what's been happening over the years, and, and in the industry it's called the race to zero, is computing power has gone up and the price has gone down. When's that ever happened, right? We, when you get more for less. And that has been doing that really, really realistically for the last seven, eight, nine years now. And it keeps doing it. You know, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and, and in Asia Pacific, Alibaba, you know, the big players are delivering more and more compute power and capability and flexibility. And that's what's causing innovation. That's why we're all seeing the likes of, you know, Amazon was early, but with Uber, just, you know, you know, if you look at the Ubers, the Airbnbs, and all the other up and coming applications and online services that we all um, enjoy and take for granted, they've been made possible because of the innovate, the up fundamental innovations of cloud computing. So going down through like, you know, that timeline of past cloud computing to now, um, you, you started at IBM, I saw on LinkedIn, is that correct? I, I did many, many, many years ago before uh, the word cloud and, and, and the way we digest stuff today was there with that, you know, it, it used to be mainframes where everyone connected remotely to them, similar to the internet, similar to what we do today, but the cost was prohibitive um, and it certainly wasn't as flexible and easy to create and develop. What we have now is anyone listening, if you're, if you're a programmer developer, you'll already be aware you can come up with an idea and from your bedroom, in COVID times, it'll probably have to be from your bedroom and from what we've lived through, but you can power up immense computing power and pay for it in the seconds and minutes, right? You can power it up, test out, try stuff, and then switch it off 10 minutes later 
and only pay for 10 minutes usage where is in those days when i started you couldn't do that you'd have had to go out and buy the kit right you'd have had to spend millions even though you only want to use it for 10 minutes a week where you're testing if they've got an idea to create something for nothing as we've seen with so many examples now of, of the big brands that we take for granted facebook prime example right that wouldn't have come about if 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 the whole innovation of cloud computing hadn't been there for Zuckerberg to take benefit from. And I, I, I speak often on this, and right now there will be other brands that in five or 10 years we'll all be talking about that are out there right now that none of us have heard of, that we don't know, I haven't heard of, and suddenly they'll appear and they'll, you know, the TikTok came from nowhere, Instagram came from nowhere. There, there were a ton of others queuing up to be big, big, uh, successful organizations in the future.